Hello everyone. In this video, we will see two nation theory and its evolution. As we all know, how the Muslim League only wanted to a separate nation, and they were not interested in complete independence of the Indian Union, as they felt that it will lead to domination of Hindu caste. So this all started in 1887, and there was a frontal attack on the Congress by Dufferin. and sayyed ahmed khan appealed to the educated muslim to stay away from the congress then in 1906 aga khan led a muslim delegation demanded separate electorates for muslims at all the levels the then viceroy minto assured them separate representation for their loyalty towards the british government this was an attempt by lord minto to divide the national force on the lines of religion and they were successful in doing so and in 1909 separate electorates were awarded to muslim under morley minto reforms to counter the muslim league hindu mahasabha was formed and its first session was held in 1915 under the leadership of maharaja of qasim bazar the congress accepted the muslim league's demand of separate electorates but grouped together to the demands of the government in 1916 muslim league also participated in the rawlat and the khilafat non-cooperation agitations with the communal angle in the years 1920 to 22 in the year 1928 one of the most important events took place in congress and nationalistic history nehru report was drafted and presented to the british government and others to see but this report as suggested by the congress was opposed by the muslim hardliners and the sikh league During the year 1912 to 24, Muslim League was dominated by younger Muslim nationalists, but this nationalism was communal in nature. In the year 1920s, the shadow of communal riots loomed larger over the country, and the Arya Samajist started Shuddhi and Sangathan movements against the Muslim population of the country, and in retaliation, the Muslims started Talibag and Tanzim movements. With the introduction of communal awards in 1932 the government accepted all muslims communal demands contained in the 14 points but some of the organizations in the 1930s to 34 like state of kashmir and khudai khidmatgars participated in civil disobedience movement but the overall muslim participation was low But in 1937 after the muslim league performed badly in the provincial election it decided to resort to the extreme communalism Jinnah during this period blocked all the avenues for conciliation by forwarding the impossible demands that the congress should declare itself a hindu organization and all the muslims would be represented by the league if the congress had accepted the demand of jinnah by doing so the religious divide would be seen clearly and jinnah would outshine in the muslim population as a leader In 1940 the Pakistan resolution was passed at Lahore session of the Muslim League. This resolution of Muslim League made it clear that the league wanted only a separate nation for Muslims and nothing short to that. During the Second World War the British India government gave a virtual veto to the league on the political settlement and the league made full use of this privilege and struck the demand of a separate Pakistan. all the above events somehow added to the evolution of two nation theory clement attlee the then british prime minister sensing the trouble all around made an announcement on february 20 1947 which came to be known as attlee statement according to the statement the british house of commons declared the british intention of leaving the indian subcontinent some of the main points of attlee statement were a deadline of june 30 1948 was fixed for transfer of power even if the indian politicians had not agreed to that time on the constitution british would relinquish power either to some form of central government or in some areas to the existing provincial governments if the constituent assembly was not fully representative that is if the muslim majority provinces did not join The British powers and obligations for the princely states would lapse with the transfer of power but these would not be transferred to any successor government in British India. Also Mountbatten would replace Wavell as the viceroy and the statement contained clear hints of the partition and even 
the balkanization of the country into the numerous states and was in essence of a reversion of the crips offer we will see congress stand for the atlas statement and the provision of transfer of power to more than one center was acceptable to them because it meant that the existing assembly could go ahead and frame a constitution for the areas represented by it also it offered a way out of the existing deadlock the communal riots and the unworkability of the congress league collision compelled in many of the early 1947 to think in terms of accepting the so far unthinkable idea of partition also the hindu mahasabha in bengal was assessing the feasibility of a separate hindu province in west bengal in april 1947 the congress president kriplani communicated to the viceroy rather than having a battle we shall let them have pakistan but bengal and punjab to be partitioned in a fair manner in 1947 mount beten replaced viceroy wevel and he proved to be firm and quick in taking decisions than his preceders because he was informally given more power to decide things on the spot he also had the advantage of the firm decision of the british government to quit at the earliest and his task was to explore the option of unity and division till october 1947 and then advise the british government on the form of transfer of power mount beten plan was designed on june 3 1947 and according to that punjab and bengal legislative assemblies would meet in two groups hindus and muslims to vote for the partition if a simple majority of either group voted for partition then these provinces would be partitioned in case of partitions two dominions and two constituent assembly would be created and sindh would take its own decision and referendums in northwestern frontier province and select districts of bengal would decide the fate of these areas the congress had conceded to unified india and all their other points would be met according to the mount beten plan independence for the princely states was ruled out and they would join either india or pakistan also independence for bengal was ruled out and accession of hyderabad to pakistan was also ruled out and mount beten supported the congress on this point the freedom to come on august 15 1947 and a boundary commission was set up if the partition was to be effected the congress was willing to accept the dominion status despite its being against the lahore congress session of 1929 spirit because it would ensure a peaceful and quick transfer of power and it was more important for the congress to assume authority to check the explosive situation also it would allow for some much needed continuity in the bureaucracy and the army on july 5 1947 the british parliament passed the indian independence act which was based on the mount beten plan and the act was to be implemented on 15th august 1947 the act provided for the creation of two independent dominions of india and pakistan and as per the provision of the independence act pakistan became independent on august 14 while india got its independence on august 15 1947 mr jinnah became the first governor general of pakistan and india however decided to request lord mount beten to continue as the governor general of india there were several problems with the early withdrawal as there were no transitional institutional structure within which the partition problem could be tackled also there was a delay in announcing the boundary commission award under ratliff and though the award was ready by august 12 1947 mount beten decided to make it public affair after august 15 so that the british could escape all the responsibility of the disturbances congress was only accepting the inevitable partition due to the long term failure to draw the muslim masses into the national movement also the partition reflects the success and failure dichotomy of the congress led anti imperialist movement the congress had two fold tasks structuring diverse classes communities groups and regions into a nation and the other one was securing independence for this nation 
while the Congress succeeded in building up sufficient national consciousness to exert pressure on the British to quit India, it failed to complete the task of welding the nation, especially in integrating the Muslims into the nation. Only an immediate transfer of power could forestall the spread of direct action and communal violence and the virtual collapse of the interim government also made the notion of Pakistan appear unavoidable. During the Crips mission of 1942, autonomy of Muslim-majority provinces were accepted and during Gandhi Jinnah talk in 1944, Gandhi accepted the right of self-determination of Muslim-majority provinces. There was a wishful thinking and lack of appreciation of the dynamics of communal feeling by the Congress and especially by Nehru who stated at various times once the British left Hindu-Muslim differences would be patched up and a free united India would be built up. Partition is only temporary and partition would be peaceful once Pakistan was conceded and what was there a fight for. Gandhi felt helpless because there had been a communalization of people and he had no option but to accept partition because people wanted it. However, he asked a question, how could there be a movement to fight communalism involving a communalized people? And he asked the congressmen, however, not to accept partition in their hearts. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you. For more videos, Please subscribe our channel.